In a low-scoring defensive battle on a rainy day in New York, it was the Broncos offense led by a rookie that was able to best the Aaron Rodgers-led Jets. And he fumbles the ball. The Jets turn it over on their... Obviously a gritty win. Uh, man, proud of how we fought. I don't know that either team expected the weather um, to impact the game like it did that much in the first half. Good team that we played and, and we fought hard. It was good to get a win. Hey Broncos Country, I'm Lori Lattimore Volkman and this is the Roundup. Repeat after me, there are no ugly wins. You know, we got some mental toughness to this team that, I, that we, you know, we bend, we don't break. So, you know, offense coming through, you know, they they started off slow and they just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, and they kept us in the game. And Sean Payton told the team before their two week road trip to the East Coast that these games would define the 2024 Broncos. Not so much this season, but the team. And he was right. After a dominating win in Tampa Bay and a hard fought victory in New York, these Broncos have found their identity. Gritty. Well, I'll tell you what, we got some grit, and uh, we're a tough football team, and uh, we got to still keep getting better. I mean, that's there's a lot on tape that we're going to have to fix, but um, pulling out these two wins against two really good football teams on the road, that's tough. Um, we get back to 2-2 two and two, um, after our slow start. It's um, exactly what we wanted to do. We got out on the road trip, and that's what we wanted to do. So it was huge, and um, just grateful for this team. Quarterback Bo Nix had a rough day by the stat line, but a beautiful day by the end result. But our defense played amazing. I mean, they kept on stopping them when we need stops, and offense ran the ball when we needed to run the ball. And this game was straight up defense and O-line and running back play, just finding ways to just keep moving the ball, keep finding points. And uh, our defense, I mean, you can't explain how, how good they played. Uh, they really brought it today, stopped everything, stopped you know, run game, pass game, holding them to three field goals is tough. Having him, you know, he has the ball last, he's driving, that's tough. Um, but we just, they played great and they brought it when they had to. Bo knows. Nix has no problem acknowledging the role of the defense and his running game for the success the offense finally had against the Jets yesterday. Although the Broncos spent a week in Virginia at a resort between the two East Coast road games, Sean Payton reminded reporters this was no excursion. This was a time to work and have a chance at a better opportunity to win. And he was right again. It had a chance to be uh, a pivotal point in the season. We're early in the season, but you find out a little bit about everyone, all of us. You know, you find out a little bit about your grit and toughness and you're going to go on the road and play Tampa. They're 2-0 and at the time. You're going to play a Jet team that that obviously is playing good football. Um, you go into some tough environments and uh, you get on a plane tonight and you get back home at two and two. That's important. The defensive battle was one for the ages as the Broncos defense sacked Aaron Rodgers five times, hit him another 14 times, and kept Aaron Rodgers and his offense out of the end zone the entire two, two minutes. They need 10 yards. Rush coming. Rodgers is shellacked. That is a huge accomplishment against one of the best quarterbacks in the league and one of the best at getting his protections and avoiding the sack. You talk about the sacks, the five sacks against Rodgers. How difficult and important is that to do against It's a, tough a, to do against him. He's someone who's real good with his protection IDs, and he also is someone who, who he knows if he if he's short one, you know, that, uh, and he knows right away. So, you know, send a guy in motion, he's, he's extremely smart, so... You know, you might go another 20 games before you see that happen to him. Um, and look, that that was part of uh, the success today. While Nix grew up idolizing Rodgers and his ability to come back in a game, he was pretty happy that his defense was able to stop Rodgers from doing just that on Sunday. Well, it was awesome meeting him. Um, obviously, I got, you know, the most respect for him. I grew up watching him, you know, several times and, you know, was never on the sidelines for it. But I watched a lot of, you know, TV comebacks where he's marching on a last drive. And honestly, you just um, got to put your, your, your hope in the defense. And, um, you know, it's a scary sight with him with the ball at the end. But... 
um, our defense, you know, came out today and, and won the game. Rodgers ended the day completing just 24 of 42 passes and amassing only 225 yards. And again, none of them in the end zone. So there, Rodgers. But let's give credit where credit is due. Vance Joseph deserves all the accolades. I thought Vance called a great game, um, as he's done all year. Um, he, he prepared us so well for this game, and um, yeah, I can't thank him enough. You know, our line as a whole is just greedy, and they're getting after it so far, and uh, I can't appreciate them enough. Uh, it makes my job easy in the back end for sure. So, um, yeah, those guys are doing their thing, uh, which was not a surprise. I expected them to do so, but, I mean, each and every week, I could just see they're getting greater and greater. But the Broncos' offense still had to do its part, as minimal as it may have been. And that 87-yard drive in the third quarter was not minimal. It was explosive. Most of the time. Um, usually these weather games, they turn into, you know, run the football games, and that's what we did in the second half. So it worked in our favor, and um, we didn't turn the ball over. We you know, kept throwing completions on first and second down, and then we got a few third down completions, you know, one being the, the in cut to, um, to court there, you know, in the, in the third quarter, which was huge. So we threw the ball when we had to, and we made some connections when we had to, and that was, you know, the difference in the game. In fact, the first down catch to Cortland Sutton over the middle was even more impressive than his touchdown a few plays later. I do. Yeah, you, you know, you, you back there, you let it develop, um, you rip it, and you trust that he's going to get there. And sure enough, he gets there and makes a catch, and that was, you know, almost flipping the field. And then we continued to go back to running the ball, and it capped off with a touchdown uh, to court. So it was huge, and that was, uh, you know, one of the big contributing plays in the game. You know, we got great protection, you know, gave us all day to throw on that play, and, you know, we just got to find a completion. We had good protection. It was a great throw. Um, you know, I believe that led to our touchdown drive. So, uh, real big play when we needed it. And you know, when when you see the the weather be the way it is, and it's not kind of on our side, you gotta you gotta be able to you know adjust. And you know, he he handled it the best way that he could. You know, he he tried to give us chances to go make plays, and some of some of them we weren't able to make for him. But the ones that we were able to make, it, we were able to get ourselves in position to go be successful. And you know, um, to see a young dude man go out there and handle handle that that the way he did against a really good defense. It was really inspiring, and um, I'm happy, man. Happy, happy to see him continue to keep making these steps forward. Bad weather or not, the young quarterback knew that if his defense was holding the Jets to just field goals, he had to get his team into the end zone. At that point, it didn't matter if the weather cleared up. I had to go out there and, and uh, contribute and be efficient and do, you know, find ways to, to get us in the end zone, find ways to win the game at that point. You know, we, we're talking on the sidelines. It's not going to be a picture-perfect game when the weather's like that and, you know, they have a good defense. You're going to go out there and it's going to be, you know, a, uh, a tough game. You're going to have to have some grit and, um, you know, some discipline, some toughness there at the end to pull those out, and, and that's what we did. But confidence was, was, was there. We just had to find a way to, um, you know, make it work. And uh, sometimes you just got to do just that. The Broncos will now have a two-week homestand to make it work even better as they host the Raiders and the Chargers. Two teams we do not want to lose to. You know, this team is young. You know, we got a lot of, a lot of young guys, but we're gritty, and uh, I like it. And uh, this, I think this one was a special one, you know, how, how that meter was rolling back and forth, and then, you know, we need to do what we need to do. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes you win like this, and that's all that matters. I'll tell you what matters. Bo Nix with his arms in the air, running to the sideline after victory formation as he and the offense celebrated their defense for what they were able to do to win the game. I'll take that ugly win all day long and twice on Sundays. Broncos country, we're two and two. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Go Broncos. Also, we're wearing these throwback uniforms against the Raiders. Sweet thing beat them. For the success he had against the uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. For the success the offense had yesterday against the Jets. For the minimal success. <laughs> geez, one of the best at <laughs> la, 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 in his and the Broncos offense overall success yesterday. Overall success against the Jets. Okay, let's just do that one more time. Good Lord. Not gritty, but gritty. <laughs>